Hi. my friends we're going to go over the rule of pericles and as we're going over this uh part of the book the main question is how did pericles influence government and culture in athens all right here we go so after the persian wars we just learned about that the greeks fought the persians and the greeks defeated the persians well after that Athens becomes the richest and most powerful city-state in all of Greece. It was so nice to live in Athens. Uh, the Athenians were led by this man right here called, named Pericles. Everyone say Pericles, all right? Not Hercules, but Pericles. Put some respect on his name. Uh, we're going to go over democracy in Athens now. Now, we're going to focus on how Pericles was able to help Athens. Well... For one thing, let's remember that Athens had a democracy. That is where the people, look at down here, all the people have the power to vote on laws. There are two types of democracies, pay attention. There is the direct democracy, and then there is the representative democracy. Check this out, look at what the difference is. In a direct democracy, the people can vote directly on laws, all right? But in a representative democracy, the people vote for representatives, so a small group of people, and the representatives vote on laws. And that is the difference. Now, let's take a look at the Athenian population. This chart is pretty interesting. All right. The total population of people in Athens back then was around 240,000 people. We're just going to round down to 240,000. Now take a look at the number of citizen men, about 30,000, citizen women, 30,000, children of the citizens, 74,000. I think this is crazy though. That means that there were more children than adults, which kind of makes sense because adults were dying at a much faster rate back then. So if you were like lived to be 30, that was a very long life, all right? Uh, most people were dead by 30, 40 years old or so, or something like that. So it makes sense. And everyone's just popping out kids because they need help. So, yeah, that actually does make sense. Uh, metics were people who moved to Athens. So these were not citizens. These were people that were like, ooh, Athens has a lot of jobs. Let me move there. Slaves, well, people who are enslaved. Look at the number of them, though. There is way more slaves than children or even citizens to tell you the truth that's crazy now look at the percentages and look who could vote men yes women no children no suckers metics the people who move there no even though they're not slaves they still cannot vote in athens because they're not citizens slaves absolutely not all right so the only people that could vote back then in ancient athens was only 12 percent well let's compare that with long beach Just take a look at this Long Beach has a population of 460,000 people. Of that, we have 328,000 citizens. That's men and women over the age of 18 that are U.S. citizens. The percentage is 71%. That's a huge number compared to Greece. That was only 12%. So 71% of people in Long Beach can vote. Children make up about 111,000. This is crazy. Look at how different it is. There's way less kids than adults today than there were back then. Huh. People must just not be liking kids. I wonder why. Um, they made up 24%. They're, they did not have the ability to vote. Now, non-citizens, these are people who move here and could be undocumented or just are immigrants and are not U.S. citizens. The guess is that there's probably around 20,000 non-citizens that live in Long Beach today. That's about 4.46%. Uh, and no, they cannot vote in elections. All right. Now let's go back to Athens. There's 30,000 men who can vote, but only 6,000 participated in meetings. This means that only 2.4% of all people were making decisions on laws. Only 2.4% out of 240,000 people, only 2.4% were actually making laws. Well, think about it like this. Is this more of a democracy or an oligarchy? Now, 
it's very easy to start thinking, wait, that's not fair. It's kind of an oligarchy. But you have to remember what life was like back then. There weren't a lot of city states that were even trying to give more people the power to vote in uh, to make laws. Most places were tyrannies, like in the Persian Empire. The thing that the big takeaway that I want you to get is that Athens was a democracy for its time, and it was a great democracy for its time. And if it wasn't for the Athenians, here we have the Athenians voting. Okay, this is how they used to vote back then. If it wasn't for the Athenians voting, we would not have a democracy in the United States today. Now, why is having a democracy so special? Well, when you have a democracy, you can vote for people like your mayor. This is your mayor right now. His name is Rex Richardson. He is the mayor of Long Beach. He makes decisions and laws about uh, so many different things that happen here in Long Beach. This guy's name is our California governor, Gavin Newsom. He makes laws that impact lots of people as well. Our president, Joe Biden. Now, these five people down here, you might not know who they are, but they are very, very powerful people that affect your lives specifically. These are the members of the Long Beach Unified School Board. These five people vote on what kids should be learning, how they should be learning, when should they be learning, what time school should start, uh, how much homework you should get, uh, what books we're going to use. These are the people that make those decisions. Now, let me show you why democracy is so powerful. If you do not like the mayor or the governor or the president or any of these school board members, when it comes to an election, you can vote them out and choose someone else. That is a representative democracy. And this is a very special system that is not found everywhere in the world. It is uh, in very few places. And we get this because of the ancient Athenians. All right, I'm gonna stop fanboying over the Athenians. Let's get back to Pericles. Now, Pericles specifically was an Athenian general, okay? Now, Pericles has some very important decisions to make as a leader. Let's say he wants to build a new building in Athens. Well, who is he going to choose? A guy that's very rich and needs a job or a guy that's not that rich but is very experienced in building? Who should Pericles choose? Probably the builder, right? Well, what about this one? Pericles needs a painting to be done. Who should he choose? The strongest warrior or a very successful artisan? Probably the artisan. Now, why choose one and not the other? Well, that's because Pericles believed in this social system called meritocracy. Go ahead and say meritocracy. Meritocracy is when it believes that key jobs should be given to the person that can best do the job. Now, there's a difference, though, because there's also an aristocracy. Everyone say aristocracy. This is where key jobs are only given to rich people of noble birth. Notice there's a big difference between these two. Now, Pericles did some other cool things to try to improve democracy, all right, and try to get more people involved. Now, we know that about 30,000 Athenian males could participate in, um, in Athenian democracy. However, only 6,000 of, 6, of them actually participated. Why? Because the other ones were just not rich enough to take a day off work to go and spend the whole day voting on laws. They had to take care of their shops or their farms or their businesses. So Pericles was like, well, what if we pay the poor people to come and participate in democracy? All the rich people were like, what the hell are you doing, man? You're taking away our power. But Pericles was like, nah, we need to get them in here. So he starts paying poor people to serve in the government. Very, very different thing. Very revolutionary thing. Now. Pericles also changed the laws so poor people could be considered citizens. There were some poor people that didn't own land and whatnot, and the, they were basically just kind of not citizens. Pericles started doing some reforms 
which allowed these people to become citizens, making these people a lot more happy and they could participate in the government more. Uh, the other thing Pericles does is he hired lots of people to build cool structures like the Parthenon. Now, when you hire all of these people to come and build these things, you're going to pay them, they're going to get that money, and they're going to go buy things in the economy. Maybe they buy clothes or food or tools. And that's just more money that's circulating, making Athens richer. So the good thing that Pericles does is he hires people to build buildings in Athens. And finally, Pericles was really, really cool because he supported writers, artists, teachers, sculptors, and architects, causing art to flourish in ancient Greece. Take a look at these pictures. We got homie right here. He's serenading these people right here. And he's like, oh, I am so happy that I have it made. For if it wasn't for Pericles, I wouldn't be paid. Bars. Uh, look at this dude over here. We got a writer. He's writing about all of his nice, interesting thoughts. And he wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for Pericles paying him. We have a teacher right here. Oh, shout out to my homie, the teacher. Look at this dude already making lessons plans for all of his students. Um, he's getting paid by Pericles. And finally over here, we got a sculptor, which is like an artisan making a statue of the goddess Aphrodite. He wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for Pericles getting him paid. So as you can see, Pericles had a very important role in making Athens a strong, rich, and powerful city-state after the Persian Wars. Now take a look at this question, and I'm going to leave you here. 